Hi, I'm Jim Hodges, Research Director at Heavy Reading. And today I'm joined by, by Gal Scriber, who is Director of Product Marketing at Amdoc. So welcome, Gal. I'm looking forward to uh, having a discussion with you today. And today we're going to be discussing AI and, and, and telcos and their business models. It's really, I think, an important topic because in the last year there's been so much discussion around how telco is going to transform business models for, for the service providers. And, and it constantly comes up in heavy reading, heavy reading research is something that's really transformational on a number of different levels. So I wanted to kind of start off my discussion with you and your discussion with service providers is really, you know, where do you think telcos or service providers are in this whole, you know, telco, you know, AI driven transformation journey right now? Sure, that's a very good question. So first of all, Gen AI has seen remarkable growth over the past two years. It is set uh, and it will uh, tra to transform every industry and telecom is no, is no different. So the accessibility of Gen AI tools and application, what we call the democratization of AI, makes it incredibly powerful, but at the same time, a potential threat. So companies that will adopt Gen AI quickly, effectively, will gain significant edge with benefits like enhanced productivity, speed to market, uh, and also obtain operational efficiencies. But still, our recent survey with uh, analysis made on among 114 CSPs revealed that less than a quarter have deployed Gen AI solution, and nearly half haven't started exploring it yet. So you see there's a, a clear gap between the awareness of Gen AI transformative potential and the actual implementation. And I believe this gap will be closed in the coming year. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, it's kind of similar in the heavy reading research we're seeing that there's a there's a real pent up demand for. It. And I think, you know, one of the things for me as an analyst is looking at use cases. I mean, that's really what drives a lot of this. And as you move from sort of the you know the the POC, you know, proof of concept trial, you know, you have to go through that process, you know, and it can be iterative, and it can be very, I think, very um, you know, powerful exercise for any service provider. But I'm just you know I'm. I think AI is often seen as sort of network optimization, but also lowering costs. So on the operational side and the network side, and I'm just wondering, it's use case driven though. Those are all use cases on both sides of the equation. I'm just wondering maybe what use cases are you kind of seeing that are emerging from these, these POCs and, and, and what service providers are kind of planning to do with these use cases? Sure. So first of all, Gen AI is expected to enable, like you said, a long list of uh, use cases and to deliver significant value to telcos. But when we look at the benefited domains at the current state, so we are mostly looking at customer service, sales, marketing. So these are the domains that are mostly impacted today. Uh, when we double click on marketing and sales, so um, it will enable, Gen AI will enable hyper-personalization, deeper and more relevant customer insight. And this is true to marketing, uh, especially in my profession, uh, the creation of content. Mm -hmm. And in customer service, the technology has the potential to transform and improve customer experience, increase the aging productivity, uh, transform digital interaction. Um, but when I look at our experience uh, in Amdocs Data Intelligence, so I can think of a good example uh, of a project we recently deployed in a North America Tier 0 uh, account. What we use there is generative AI and machine learning together to improve customer service. So, and this is the domain that the customer uh, chose. So the customer wanted to better the consumer experience. Mm -hmm. So we enhanced them by predicting the customer intention and the reason for the next call. And this removed the need for long menus a repetitive conversation with agent and, uh, and so on and so forth. And I can share that our approach resolved issues across different um, uh, verticals like IVR, call centers, chatbots. It provided predictive uh, intent-based uh, service at every customer touch point. So this is a good example of how we utilize Gen AI to foster trust among, uh, and loyalty among the end users. Um, but I can say that I personally, in my view, I personally believe that to be able to unlock Gen AI potential to its fullest, we need to harness it and its abilities in other domains, other business processes. Network is a good example, software development, data management. So these are the domains that once benefited, I believe that we create a breakthrough in uh, Gen AI adoption. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. I think you're right. I mean, 
clearly I, you're kind of focusing on the sort of the transformational component of AI, and that's that's a key part of that for sure. And just it's clear though that any service provider is going to have to have a really solid strategy to integrate Gen AI into the networks, and that that's going to take some time, and it has to be done correctly to get that sort of transformational value you talked about, management and things like that. Um, I'm just wondering, do you think there's sort of a template that service providers or telcos can follow to kind of help them you know, implement this and integrate it and really kind of unlock the power of AI, uh, Gen AI from a business perspective? Sure. Um, so yes, yeah, so we previously discussed and touched a bit about the use cases, the Gen AI use cases, but to be able to scale Gen AI, CSPs need to integrate it and integrate Gen AI into the business processes. So integration of internal workflows and systems is crucial when CSPs are deploying Gen AI. So CSPs can use Gen AI uh, to summarize call center conversation, uh, to maintain several uh, different kinds of manuals, the basic, the basic stuff. But unless Gen AI output can trigger automated actions or workflow, its value will be limited. And uh, CSPs understand that. In our server, for instance, nearly half of the respondents rank Gen AI uh, integration with business processes as critical. Uh, in addition, if I remember the stat very correctly, 80% cited it as the biggest challenge uh, in preparing for Gen AI. So this shows the key role of LLM-based integration whenever you implement Gen AI. And uh, in Amdocs Data Intelligence, with its presence and long, even intimate uh, understanding of telecom system, telecom data, can really play a pivotal role in this uh, in this effort. Yeah, I totally agree. Yes. And, and well said. I think there are so many aspects to how you integrate this. And one of the things we're gonna we want to we want to wrap up here. But one of the things I did want to explore with you, Magali, is um, data. I mean, we always talk about how important data is, visibility for security, customer experience, network performance. Um, you know, how do you kind of see that the search providers or CSPs are looking at how they utilize data in their new Gen AI implementation? Because it, it does kind of change sort of the value or the visibility of data. So how do you think uh, CSPs are really kind of rationalizing that or being able to integrate that as well? Sure, and I totally totally relate to, to, the, to the vision and to your comment you just, uh, you just stated. So for my discussion with customer, it is clear that generative AI brings opportunities, awaken people in the companies to the concept of Gen AI in general. But this opportunity turned data into a critical issue they must address. For the first time, Gen AI enables CSP to drive value from large amounts of unstructured text document without needing deep data science expertise. So the quality of Gen AI output depends on the data it is uh, trained on, right? This is an axiom. I value a telecom use case requires clean, accurate, large volumes of telecom-specific data. But on the other end, silo data environment, fragmented data environment, ungoverned data can block their ability to deliver Gen AI projects. So if CSP data architecture don't meet this requirement, there is low quality Gen AI output and slow adoption. And this reality is pushing CSPs to reassess, to upgrade the data architecture, and we are here in Amdocs Data Intelligence to support them in this fascinating journey. Yeah, really interesting. And I, I totally agree with you. There's a, there's a lot of moving parts to this. So um, first of all, we're going we're to leave it there, but I think you know, for the audience, I think we've covered a lot of the key points and the key considerations for CSPs and their, their whole Gen AI driven transformation. And, and, and uh, Gal, thank you so much for joining me today and providing your, your insights. And this is in a really important area and uh, we're going to be obviously keeping an eye on it from a development and research perspective, but thank you for joining us today and giving us uh, kind of your view of where we are and, uh, and where, where we're going to be going in the next, uh, next uh, few months. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Jim.